Santa Cruz. <laughs> And we need to get Bernie to listen because essentially anybody who needs to get in touch with him has there's no access to Bernie Sanders and it's extremely pertinent to this election. We have been saying this well, well before this primary. However, because of the way politics works, you know, uh, we couldn't speak on it until we figured out what was going on. I'm so I'm, I'm I wish I could say I was joking. I wish I, said, I could say this is a laughable matter. And it's like, yeah, Hillary's corrupt. <laughs> it's it's way it's way deeper than that. My name is Nico House. I am the president of North Carolina College Students for Bernie Sanders. I'm also the president for Carolina Students for Bernie Sanders at UNC. Um, I'm also a retired service veteran. Um, I served for three years in the military as a paralegal. Um, currently at UNC, finishing up my undergrad. I'm a double major in Portuguese and political science. I'm going to law school. All we said we needed was, I mean, we just needed someone here to answer the questions to make sure that we weren't doing anything illegally while we were doing things for the campaign. Fast forward, we finally get our first staff member here. Um, we have our conference calls and then we start going to work. However, it, it didn't work out like that. There's been a concerted effort um, to essentially get rid of every single person in North Carolina that could have made a difference. Many of you don't know, but even though we were in the South, we were one of the most organized states in the country. We worked together, the college students and the volunteers, in a way that Bernie said, he personally said in a private meeting that we had, that he hadn't seen in the entire nation up until that point. And it was fluid, even when people were busy, things were still getting done. There was a lot of bright, bright po people politically, socially, they knew how to lead, they were fantastic. I mean, just absolutely amazing. Once the paid staff members came here, they were pushed out in some way, form or fashion. The hardest disappointment was when we, um, when I saw the, the state office in Charlotte run by the state director and his small staff and the organizing was so shameful. Yeah, I knew something was wrong. I never got good vibes going into the office. You know, I never felt welcome. Never felt like they had it together like the day before the primary. People still didn't even know how to canvas or knock on doors. It's not only happened in Charlotte, ladies and gentlemen, it's happened in Wilmington, where we had another one of the, fi the finest organizers in the state, in a, in a, a town that is, tends to lean a little bit more conservative, where it used to be very democratic, but it's very much so a conservative town more so now. Um, and she was fantastic in organizing. I'm talking about to the extent where she was organizing before we knew she was organizing in the state. Pushed her out. One guy organized two offices from volunteer money. There was two offices from just donations. Once he went to go volunteer in Iowa, he was not greeted with his friendly volunteer office that he almost single-handedly started and helmed by himself. His office was taken over by the campaign and by our new state director. That wouldn't be a bad idea, right? Except for they didn't tell him. He came back and found out, yeah, your office is taking over. Thanks for all the hard work you did, bye. At first it didn't look like that big of a deal. Everybody thought it was just like, okay, it's, it makes the most sense. Charlotte's one of the largest cities and Mecklenburg is one of the largest counties. Okay, so the problem was, why didn't you tell him? Right? If you have nothing to hide, why, would, why wouldn't you tell him? After they got into their altercation about the situation, because he was upset and rightfully so, he was kicked out. He wasn't kicked out officially. He was just moved. In such a way that essentially he was just made so that he could not make any drastic or pertinent decisions for the campaign anymore. By the time I came back from spring break and I asked who was still like out of the main group that started, who was still involved with the campaign, there was nobody left. I had my event for the school, we planned a rally against student debt. And it was supposed to be on a Thursday and then someone came up with the bright idea to do it on a Sunday. Who's gonna go to a rally on a Sunday in the South? I was told, we're gonna get surrogates, we're gonna have people speak, we have to get permits, which I knew we didn't, but they were so convinced that we had to get the permits from the campaign, which I've never, ever seen the campaign ever say they have to get permits for volunteers to hold rallies. Maybe three to four days beforehand, we kept getting put off and we we're trying to figure out what was going on, what's going on. Hey, what's happening? What's happening with the march? You said you want to get surrogates. Where are the surrogates at? 
Nope. So that was canceled. Anybody with any common sense who could see through this nonsense, we're all pushed out. Every time we asked a question, we were ignored. Every time we tried to bring up something, we were deflected. Every single time we tried to hold an event that the campaign itself didn't try to didn't sponsor before we started, it was completely pushed out to the point where we held a march um, on the 13th and we uh, agreed it was just best to keep the campaign out of it. Because for whatever reason, every single time the campaign got involved in something, Boom, it was done. It was over. We knew it wasn't going to happen. I mean, there, I, I could go on for literally days about all the things that have been going on in North Carolina. Because of what I just got confirmed by a journalist, um, I can go ahead and start naming names. So here's the deal. Aisha, we know that you were connected to Hillary. We've seen your Facebook. We see your picture with Debbie Washington Schultz. Anyone with any kind of common sense knows and knew at the time that you took the picture, which was around November, right before you were hired, that Debbie Washington Schultz was obviously against Bernie and supporting Hillary. I saw your Facebook before you were hired because I didn't tell you, nor did anyone else tell you because I told you not to. I saw that you were phone banking for Hillary. You were advertising for it all over your Facebook. You lied so many times. You didn't respond to the NAACP members that tried to get in contact with the Sanders campaign. You did not respond to Senator uh, Mayor Chris Ray. You did not respond to anybody who tried to endorse Bernie Sanders. Robert Dempsey in some way, if not directly, indirectly pushed for Aisha to be hired here. That is the only way that Aisha could have gotten through the vetting process because she obviously didn't get vetted. Nobody in the African American caucus likes her. The African American caucus had no idea that we had an office there. That's information that you have to blatantly withhold from somebody. Robert Dempsey, this man has been an avid Hillary supporter forever. Forever. How he got onto Bernie's campaign is beyond me. In North Carolina, he was the chair of the North Carolina Democratic Party at one point. They are possibly the most corrupt Democrats that I have ever seen in my life. Robert knew about this, and the person who really knew about it was the person who pushed for Robert. Patsy! Another avid Hillary supporter. This is not only unique to North Carolina, this is every single place. Every single southern state, this has happened. We're gonna call it what it is. And I promise you, we're gonna get down to this.